I love to dye fabrics and I will throw anything on some fabric to get some color on it so then I can use it in stitching. But sometimes I'm not that thrilled with what I end up with or maybe I'm only getting like one note and I want something that's got a little bit more vibrancy to it. Shocking, I'm not doing just earth tone stuff anymore. So here's some fabric that I had dyed using paint water which means I took my leftover paint bottles, you know, where they're just about empty, or maybe I took some that still had paint in them, and I dumped it in my tub and added some water, and then added the fabric. And so I ended up with this kind of, they're, they're shades of green, and it's pretty, but it's just kind of, it, it's not exciting enough. It's okay, but I want more, because I'm greedy like that. So, and they're just scraps in different sizes. I think these are, are bits of the sheet. And so I just feel like it could be a little bit better. Um, I, I like brown, but this kind of looks like it got drugged through the, the mud one of those days. And I'm not sure what, I think this might have been onion skins or avocado or a combination. It's very peachy, which works for some people, but it's just not, um, not something that works for me. It's earthy, but it's still kind of one note. So I've got some nice linen that would be, this would be really fun to stitch on, but it's gotta get a little bit more happening to it. So I figured I would just throw some more stuff on it because if you don't like the way your fabric turned out, well, just do it over again. Just keep adding it on. It's no different than if you're making a collage out of paper or out of fabric. You just need to put another layer. So I just need some more layers of color on here. So I grabbed a few things out of the studio. Uh, these are some things I'm trying to use up. So I'm fine with messing with these. These are some Marabou acrylic uh, paint sprays. So I've got them in some, these are some really bright colors. So we can play with these. I grabbed a few distress inks just because, again, I'm trying to use these guys up. So I've got some, some greens and a purple. And I grabbed one of the, um, the Glimmery Mist glimmer mist things that are left here and it's kind of like some brown sparkle it'll add a little bit of sparkle maybe and if it doesn't that's okay too because I can just keep doing things to it so this is just to protect my desk a little bit and if any color gets on there it's okay because it's going to keep adding to this and I am going to put some gloves on because this is going to get messy and that's okay we want the mess right I have everything all wrung out. It's all nice and damp, which means it should soak in well. And I, you know, I just want to make this a little more exciting. That's all. There is no exact science to this, really. You just play with it until you get something you like. And if you don't like it, just keep playing with it. It's already kind of orangey, but we're just going to... Oh, this might be the one where the, the sprayer doesn't want to spray anymore. So... We're just going to add some stuff, and we're going to see what happens. I can't ruin this. I can't. It might end up being a color that's not my first choice, but that can all be changed with just adding more color later. All my spritzers are dying. That's okay. So it's really fluorescent. So let's get some distress greens in there. And who knows what this is going to do? Who knows? If the whole thing looks horrible, I will uh, stick it in some eco dyeing stuff and roll with it. You know, we just roll with it. But I, I'm feeling a little bit more drawn lately to brighter colors, which is kind of exciting. It gives, it opens up more opportunities, especially for using a lot of the threads that I've been collecting. Let's add some purple, because you know, why not? Why not? So it looks like a hot mess, right? And it might end up being a hot mess. But this is fun. This is the mad scientist kind of fun that I really enjoy. This is pine needles. And we're just mixing it up here. We are just mixing it up. Now, because I'm mixing some water-based um, coloring with it with the distressed things this is not anything that you would throw in the washing machine because you would just lose the color but I don't plan on washing this kind of stuff so I'm okay with that again with the spritzer that says nine I do not want to work so fine 
Now the other way you could do this is you could just put it in a tub and spray into the tub. Don't have any flat space. There we go. This probably isn't going to spray either, right? Yeah, <laughs> I already knew that wasn't going to spray. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle around. going with the colors that I wanted. And raspberry. Oh, Ooh, that's pink. All right, let's just see what happens because now I'm going to add a little more water. It's a little scary right now. I might need to go grab some different colors. I don't know. I don't know. That pink was kind of Pink might not have been the best choice, but it's okay. It's okay. They're going to dry lighter than they are. Oh, I'm getting excited. Okay, look at here. This is going to be good. Yeah, I probably won't use that pink again. Unless I'm trying to brighten something up. Hmm. What happens if we put that on there? I don't know if that's going to help or not. We'll find out, won't we? I don't know what this is going to end up like, but I'm kind of liking what's happening there. So we're going to get a little bit more color in here. Hot mess, right? But it's okay. It's my hot mess. People say don't mix your colors, you're going to get mud. I happen to be a big fan of mud. All right, this is really a lot more exciting to me, and it's not going to dry that dark. Okay, we're going to leave that off to the side. That one I'm going to say is done. Yeah. Yep, already liking this a lot better. Already. Let's see, do I have a spray bottle? I do. Like I said, there's no right, there's no wrong, there's just doing it. And if you don't like it, you know, dunk it all in a tea bath. I'll often do that. I'll put it in a tea or coffee bath afterwards. All right. And, and really this don't. one is kind of wild. Wow. You know, the bright orange might be a whole lot better. Just want to add some green to that. I don't know what this is going to dry like. This is kind of exciting. Just don't want any, like, if I can help it, any exact dots. Kind of just going in there and mushing it around a little bit. Oh, yeah. This looks a lot more exciting now. We've got dark places. we got light places. And often what will happen when it's drying is I'll go out there and I'll just add some more sprays to something. Let's see, this is looking a lot, a lot more interesting to me. I know some of you that really like the vintage look might have been freaking out. Trust me, it's all going to be good in the end. All right, so I'm just going to let this one sort of soak up whatever is on here. green. Some of the pink. It's gonna it's gonna mix with the other stuff. And on top of the pink we're gonna put that purple. And then some green. You could do this with watercolor, you could do this with ink tents, you could do this with just regular paint. All right, I got a hot mess. Add a little more water to where I put the sprays on. 
for the uh, ink droppers, not the sprays. All right, and now I'm gonna just mess it all up. This looks very earthy now. So we might still get some of the fluorescent color, but we might not. The way all these things mix together, you know, they're not necessarily made to play together, so. And it's pretty watered down. I mean, it's pretty watered down. And this one can just soak up. What's here? add orange oh, what the heck we can be about done with the orange it looks like all right we are done with the orange mm, what the heck let's add some pink because then after the pink let's I think we can finish off the purple I'll have to do another video where I'm actually more precise about what colors I'm putting where. But again, this is just about fixing some fabric that, that I wasn't excited about. Gonna soak up anything. Any purple left in here? Maybe? Not much. But that's okay. Add some pink. It all mixes together, it all turns kind of earthy. already so I am back the fabric is all dry and it looks amazing I am in love with every piece of it it does not look anything like the original fabric and that was the whole idea right um, I'll see if I can slide in some uh, some of the graphics from before I can't identify exactly which one was which but I know this was the mostly green and brown and so now I've got some rusty brown and some orangey Things. This will be a nice piece to just do some small stitching on. Look at this. This was another one of the ones that was mostly green, and now it's kind of like a blue-gray. I think it's coming through kind of purpley, perhaps, on the screen, but it's more like a, a blue-gray to go with the green and the rust. Oh, and look at this over here. That is so yummy. And these lines, I have no idea what caused the lines. I didn't wrap it in anything with string. Often I'll get those kind of marks when I'm doing something with string, but not this time. It's just all the colors that I put on there playing together and doing their own thing. So just think about that. If you've dyed some fabric, if you've gotten color, and when I say dye, I don't mean that you've used, you know, writ dye or fabric dye. You've done paint water, which is what some of these were. You've done onion skins. You've done eco printing. You've done uh, watercolors. Anything that you have done and you haven't been really pleased with the colors, uh, this has really got a lots of greens, little hints of pinks and blues, throw something else on it. Throw some more paint water on it. Throw some distress sprays on it. Throw some re-inkers on it. This is definitely going to be great to cut up 
into something else, smaller pieces to stitch on. And these are my favorites. <gasps> so grungy. I don't know which one this was, whether this was the pinkish one or whether this was the green one, but it is beautiful now. Really wonderfully grungy. And then this was the little handkerchief. So that'll be a nice piece just right there, just to stitch on by itself. I will probably do some embroidery over here. And remember, I threw some of the uh, glimmer mist in there, and there's little bits of sparkle just here and there. I don't know which side I like better. They're both awesome. And I love that it's all rough around the edges. And this was a linen napkin, and it is fabulous, too. I think it must be the juniper reinker that's got like this kind of a blue green absolutely gorgeous and this last one is a piece of linen I know this one started off pinkish and it's just got the most marvelous colors on it just fabulous oh so I'm thinking on this one I'm gonna cut these down to smaller pieces so I can do maybe a series of stitching. And again, I've got some, some wonderful little wrinkled marks in here that I have no idea where they came from, but it is just gorgeous. So don't despair if you're getting color on fabric and you don't like it the first time. It just means it's not done yet. Put another layer of color on it. Mix your mediums. It doesn't matter. Just keep playing with it until it makes you happy. Till next time, make art your way just because. Mm -hmm.